Have you been donating blood and seeing low ferritin levels in your blood test? Maybe you're feeling a little more tired. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at the impact of blood donation causing low ferritin levels, whether that's something you need to worry about. Is there benefit to having low ferritin in terms of not needing to donate blood? And what is the impact on your body? Again, my name is Dr. Taranella. If you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom diagnosis, or something like blood donations causing low ferritin. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your body. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, hormones, abnormal lab values, and overall just trying to get a better understanding of what's going on in your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out this question on blood donation causing low ferritin. So in this video, we're going to talk about your blood donations causing low ferritin or low iron. It's not uncommon for people that are donating blood on a regular basis, whether they're on TRT or just doing it because they want to be a good citizen for them to get low in their stored iron called ferritin. I've certainly seen this enough in my practice to know that it's not unusual. But for most people, for those with normal absorption of iron and no regular consistent loss of iron, either through some sort of internal bleeding or heavy menstruation, they're able to replenish those iron stores within two or three months without any problems. However, if you're donating blood on a regular basis every two or three months, and you're not consuming enough iron, either in the way of your food or taking an iron supplement, you will end up with low ferritin, and eventually you may not be able to donate blood anymore. Sometimes the issue may be more with absorption of iron, or you're taking a medication that may be limiting your iron absorption, such as with a proton pump inhibitor or other acid blockers. These medications reduce the absorption of iron of course, there's other digestive issues that can be playing a role in poor absorption of iron, but taking proton pump inhibitors or other acid blockers is a common one that I see as well. So what we're really talking about here is your blood donations causing low ferritin. Is this really a problem and do you have to do anything about it? So ferritin reflects more of a global state of your body's stores of iron. When your body has plenty of iron circulating throughout the blood, it's going to put some into storage forms. As those storage forms kind of come down, you still may have plenty circulating in the blood if you look at a serum test and you may still even have normal hemoglobin and red blood cells, which also require iron levels, but that ferritin level may be really low. Now, again, this is something that I typically see in my patients that are on testosterone replacement therapy and donating blood on a regular basis. Because of the erythrocytosis or increased red blood cell production that happens with TRT, you're taking that iron that's in the stored form in the ferritin and building hemoglobin and from that hemoglobin the red blood cells on a regular basis depending on how much erythrocytosis you have going on you may do that more rapidly than other people you then go and donate that blood that stored iron that went into making those red blood cells and hemoglobin is exiting your body. So the question is, do you need to build that stored iron back up or can you just ignore it? Well, if you don't replace it, eventually you'll become anemic. And as I said, eventually that hemoglobin level will go down to a low enough level to where you won't be able to donate blood, which would be fine because then you're also not having high hematocrit either and you're not at risk for blood clots and all the things associated with high hematocrit. And some have made the claim that you shouldn't take any iron because then you're just going to get more red blood cell production and be in the vicious cycle of donating blood. So the idea is that you donate enough blood until your ferritin is low enough to where you no longer have the erythrocytosis because there's not enough ferritin there, and then you don't have to donate blood anymore. In theory, that makes sense, but we have to remember that iron is used for more than just making hemoglobin and red blood cells. It's also used in your mitochondria as an important part of 
making ATP is also used in our immune defenses, in making free radicals that kill off microbes, and it's used in a lot of other areas as well. So if you barely have enough to make red blood cells and hemoglobin, then you barely have enough to do these other things as well. If you're always on the edge of being anemic, that's not really good either in terms of delivering oxygen to your tissues. And generally, I just don't think this is a very good strategy. In my patients, it's a frequent cause for people feeling fatigued when they're on TRT, either in a gradual sense or it can come on all of a sudden. You may feel low exercise tolerance in these types of things because of the lack of iron in your body, which is occurring from the frequent blood donations. All this to say that if you're on TRT and you're donating blood on a regular basis and you feel like you might be having problems, make sure you're checking your iron ferritin levels to make sure you're not low in your overall iron levels. They do check your iron when you go donate blood. Very rarely do they check your ferritin. All right, that's all I had on this video on the impact of donating blood causing low ferritin. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of some of the nuances with this problem of donating blood and getting low ferritin, low iron stores, and managing your iron in general. If you do have additional questions, comments on this, drop them in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. We'll see you next time.